I'm Sarah Malinowski. I'm Emily Jenkins. I'm Lauren Miracle, and we are the authors of the Upside Down Magic series. And we are hanging out with Linda Lee Rose. Hey everybody, I'm Linda Lee, and today's interview is going to be magical because I'm interviewing the authors of the Scholastic book series that inspired the new Disney Channel movie, Upside Down Magic. So joining me right now are Emily Jenkins, <laughs> Lauren Miracle, and Sarah Mlinowski. Um, Great job! <laughs> 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 um, okay, so did each of you have a viewing party when the movie premiered, or did you watch it all together? What was really fun, what was interesting actually is that the three of us are all in different time zones, so while we couldn't watch it together because it aired at different times yeah. for everybody. But we all did fun stuff to celebrate. I had a uh, driveway red carpet with my two girls, my two daughters outside. It was just us, but we put out a red carpet and a background and we got UDM balloons and we pretended to walk the red carpet, uh, just the four of us, and we took some pictures. And then we all put it on the outdoor projector and we got to watch it and it was very exciting to be able to watch it as it was being put, aired for everyone on the West Coast. I had to do the same kind of thing. We dressed up and um, one of my daughters even wore a tuxedo and my other daughter bought um, like, you know, movie theater popcorn bags and Disney sent us Upside Down Magic branded snacks like caramel corn and nice. M&Ms and things like that. So, you know, we made it really festive. We took pictures and um, it felt like a party even though, you know, we were still sheltering at home. And we did, we did a viewing party too. We did um, one level for the kids and one level for the grown-ups so that we could maintain all of the good social distancing stuff. But it made me so happy to watch it and to have, to hear my friends laugh and giggle. And then as soon as it was over, of course, Emily and Sarah and I both, we all got together again to say, you guys, that was really good. And just to take a moment to feel really proud of it. What did you think of the movie? I thought it was so good. That's like probably one of my favorite movies now. Okay. <laughs> it was really good. Were there, was there anything surprising to you about it? Oh, okay. The dark magic, like, at first scared me, but then I was like, okay, actually, this is uh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, gotta have something. this much scary, right? Yeah. Just to add that little extra excitement, but I don't think yeah. it's too much for the younger viewers at all. So now that the movie has come out on Disney Channel, many people are just learning that it's actually based on a scholastic book series, and I'm sure we'll be running out to read them. So, <laughs> so what differences between the book and the movie will they find? Quite a lot. Uh, Nori is the heroine of both the books and the movie, and She's really totally the same in, in both. That same really bouncy, you know, doesn't take no for an answer, believes yeah. in herself kind of person. Um, and she has the same magic power. She transforms into these kind of wonky animals and into a, a dritten, a dragon plus a kitten mushed together, especially. So cute. <laughs> um, but they did make a lot of changes um, in order to kind of open up the story and make it right for the shape of a movie rather than the shape of a book series. So there's more scariness in the movie, uh, maybe a little more drama. The books are, are very, very funny. They're kind of comforting and um, jolly. There's a lot of adventure, but they're not so, um, there's not like a big shadow magic taking over people's spirits. That is a big yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe Emily, the bigger in the books, the bad thing is less paranormal and more, what if we don't find a way to live our truest lives? What if we don't find a way to feel comfortable in our own skins? And that's something that's real. That's something that we all have to struggle with, you know, in a world that may or may not have shadow magic in it. Mm -hmm. um, other differences in the book were just things like, we don't get to see, we have, we have in our books, eight main characters, eight upside down magic students. And so in the movie, I think we only saw four. In the books, a flicker turns invisible. In the movie, Pepper is a flicker, and they use it to mean you can flick something away, like a, what it's telekinesis, and, and since Pepper's magic is upside down, she can flick something. No, you're supposed to flick it away. Right, and Pepper <laughs> flicks it away. 
So yeah, still gets confusing. So little differences. Like that. Oh, and, and the headmaster is totally different and the teacher is different. The biggest change, the biggest change is that the school in, in the movie, in the book series, the Adnori um, tries out to get into Sage Academy. Um, and in the book series, she does, that also happens in the books. She does not get into Sage Academy because it's a very fancy magic school. And instead she's sent to Dunwiddle Magic School. Um, so in the movie is set at Sage Academy. So that's kind of the, the biggest difference. Although in book seven that we, that just came out called Hide and Seek, we set that at Sage, Sage Academy. There's a flood at Dunwiddle and the kids are sent to Sage to be there for a week until the repairs are done. So we did get to write about Sage Academy, but it's not really the main setting of the book series. That's that's really crazy. <laughs> it's public magic school in the books. In the books, everybody gets magic powers when they turn 10 years old, the whole world. So there's just public middle schools that are magic schools and you could just go to your local magic school and sage is a very fancy private one and i think you know the disney magic is to take you to a magical world that seems super special that's what disney's all about a lot of the time yeah. and i love those stories so mm -hmm. when they took upside down magic i think they really wanted to bring the spirit of the books and the characters and a lot of the way the magic works that we had built. Um, but they really wanted to make the most special magic school and the most beautiful magic school for- So oh, gorgeous. Um, yeah, it was so pretty. At. I, yeah. I want to go to Sage Academy. <laughs> we visited that yeah, we place. We were yeah. there. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So beautiful, and it was so wild for us to see signs at the Sage Academy and to see, I mean, it was really not just the sets, but watching the movie and seeing the Dritten fly across the, the, the screen, the, our dragon kitten, Amazing. which is what Nora turns into, it was just fabulous. <laughs> yeah. And Lee, if you did go to Sage Academy, which magic group do you think you would be? Um, I would probably be a fuzzy. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Just looking at you. So, <laughs> that, that sweet, you love animals, don't you? Yeah. And you want justice in the world and you want everybody to be treated kindly. I can see that. <laughs> I do. It makes sense. So, you wrote this as a book series. How fun was it to see it come to life as a Disney Channel movie? Ah, uh, well, I've got a goofy answer. I mean, it was, it was magic. It was pure magic. And Gosh, it's just one of those dreams that you have and then suddenly it's real and yeah. you have it be real and then to also just love what they did and love the actors and love the screenplay. I, I just am so proud. I just feel so full of happiness about it. Should we be expecting to see another Disney Channel UDM movie like maybe when we get out of the pandemic or something? We, we would love nothing more. So that's definitely, we're hoping. <laughs> yeah, we are just crossing our fingers like crazy. Mm -hmm. And did you see, did you stay for the very end of the, I'm sure you did, the very end of the movie that gave yeah. a bit of a suggestion that maybe. So we, we sure hope that that comes to pass. So watching the UDM movie, it visually felt like a fun mashup of Disney's Descendants and Harry Potter. So I'm curious, what were some influences for the book and its characters? Well, there's a long history of stories about magic school. So Harry Potter is by far the most famous, but there are um, actually like a ton of magic school books mm -hmm. that existed even before Rowling's novels. One book that we all read together was Witch Week, by Diana Wynne-Jones, um, which is um, a story of a boarding school where uh, there is a witch, but nobody knows who the witch is and magical things keep happening at the boarding school. And we didn't use anything specific from Witch Week, but we all agreed that we loved the flavor of it and the kind of wonder of it um, and the tensions that were going on at the school because of the way the magic was working. So I would say that was one of our influences. Yeah. And I think another one was something, well, that in Harry Potter, you know, it's Harry turns out to be super amazing, best ever at magic, right? And so the three of us talked about, well, guess what? We're not all the super amazing top person at the things that we try mm -hmm. to do. A lot of us are, you know, some of us struggle. A lot of us feel, you know, in the middle or feel normal or, you know, instead of spectacular. So I think we also wanted to tell a story 
about the kids who didn't necessarily look like the superstars, the superheroes, just from the very start. In terms of the point of view, I was influenced anyway by a little bit by the Sweet Valley High books, <laughs> which <laughs> will make the other authors laugh. What I, I don't know if you read those, but what I loved about those is that we saw the main characters and we also showed yes. a second yes. point of view that was different every time. And that in Upside Down Magic, we, we did that. Nori, uh, this, the first book is from Nori's point of view, and then all the other shows Nori, and then one of the other kids in the Upside Down Magic class. So we really get to know the families and the issues and the dreams of all the kids in the class over the first seven and eight books, because we just finished writing the eighth book in the series, which will be out next summer. Yeah, like, so for example, uh, there's a book, the second book is called Sticks and Stones, and it is told from Nori's point of view and the point of view of Bax, who y'all didn't get to meet in the movie. And Bax is in an upside down flicker, but no. what he does, flexor. upside down flexor, upside down, thanks, see? <laughs> Again, ah, he's an upside down flexor, but instead of flexing into animals, he flexes into a big rock. <laughs> so whenever it happens, you're just like, thud. And then they're like, okay, flex back, flex back. And you know, the rock just sits there. And so they, they end up having to get a wheelbarrow. There's this whole ritual that develops where they have to wheelbarrow him to the to Nurse Riley, who gives him this yucky green medicine and he's able to flex back. But so to tell the story, they talk, you know, so some chapters are from Nori and other chapters are from Bax. And so to get to hear what it feels like to be a boy who keeps turning into a rock in the middle of the hall and then has to be lugged away in a wheelbarrow, you know, it's just super fun to get to see those different perspectives. I love that. <laughs> So walk us through the process of like when you get together to write the books, um, how long does it take you to complete from start to finish and how far ahead are you with the future Upside Down Magic Scholastic books? That's, that's a good question. I mean, especially that last one about how far ahead are you in thinking. All right, well, I'll tell you the main way that we wrote most of the books in this series was that we all three of us brainstormed together. What, what, who should it be? What should it be? What's the main story? And then I write the outline. So basically an outline is kind of like, you know, blueprint um, for what is gonna happen in the book. And the outline is about 20 pages and it's chapter by chapter saying all the things that are going to happen in the book. And I send it to the other ladies to make sure that they are, you know, good with it. They give me notes back, I tweak it to make sure it works. And then I send the outline over to Lauren and Lauren writes the first draft, and she writes a really long, awesome first draft full of magic and sparkles and drittens and all kinds of hilarity. Um, the and then being really long, really as long. in too long, really long. <laughs> so many sparkles, but we love the sparkles. And then she sends that over to Emily, and then Emily is the keeper of the logic of the series because Lauren and I sometimes throw in new animals and new things yeah. that don't actually work within the magic. And Emily uh, edits it all down and makes it sound perfect and keeps us in line and edits it and also adds in lots of extra jokes, of course. And then we send that back and forth between the three of us a few more times until it's ready to send it to our editor, David, at Scholastic. And then he reads the whole thing and marks up the manuscript and also gives us like lots of notes to make it better. We take that back, we edit it again. It goes back and forth between us again. And then we send it back to David and hope. And then we do a couple of, once they design it, we do a little bit more. And I would say the whole, the whole from the beginning to end probably takes about a year of us working on it. Um, and then there's a few months while they print. So the whole process from when we start the book to when it comes out into in stores is probably about a year and a half. That's also, so it's cool. crazy. I write in orange and Sarah oh. writes in blue and Lauren writes in pink. And so we keep track of who is what color. And yeah. that way as That's we're matches, you can yeah. see what someone else has done. Especially when we're brainstorming. I, I like that way. I like that way a lot. I hope we keep doing it like that. Do your roles ever switch or are they each a unique creative part that make up the magic of the series? I'd say we switch a lot, but I think the key to the good collaboration is that we don't always stay totally in our boxes. Mm -hmm. We we like to switch it up. We like to stay energized. We like to try new ways of working or when someone is someone is exhausted or overworked someone else will say oh i'll step in and do part of your job for a while and then hand it back to you when you're ready um we pinch hit for each other a lot 
and that I think keeps keeps the work lively because after seven books in a series, you could you could be asleep, you know, or <laughs> bored with your work. But switching it up and and also helping each other out when we're down um, really keeps it always feeling like fun. Yeah. Bored is not even an option with the writing with the two of you guys. That is not, <laughs> even, not even close. <laughs> Well, if the characters from UDM were stuck in quarantine, what do you think they would be doing at home right now? Oh man, that's another great question. That's a great question! <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I will say that one thing that is really consistent between the books and the movies is that when Nori gets stressed out, she fluxes. And the more stressed she is, the more wonky her animal shapes get. And I think that's true even when she gets better control over her magic. She still is liable in, in stressful times to wonk out. And so I think there would be a lot of like, you know, her turning into a goat mixed with a kitten, maybe mixed with a, you know, ostrich or something. And you'd walk into the kitchen, you know, during quarantine and there'd be a kitten ostrich goat e eating everything out of your kitchen cabinet or, or, or swallowing the last towels of your laundry or something like that. <laughs> um, I think there'd be a lot of Nori mayhem. Well, I think she might also flex into something like a spider because then her small world would become huge and she explore, she'd have a whole new world to explore within the the rules of the pandemic, you know, like what does it look like under a sofa when you're teeny tiny and you climb up that bookshelf and that, you know, that's what I, I think Nori would explore that possibility. <laughs> this is why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> that was a really good answer, Lauren. The spider idea is amazing. Kitten spider yeah. with a little bit of butterfly, I don't know. <laughs> oh, and oh, I like it. Cool, right? In oh, light I like that. Cool. Yes, yes, that's good. That's good, Sarah. But Elliot would be, Elliot in the books has ice magic. So he would be making some super awesome slides and activities, maybe like an ice castle or something. That would be fun. Yeah. Ooh, that would be good. I feel like Pepper would be uh, breaking everything. Yeah, she has yeah. a bit of Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> She's so feisty. Yeah, I love yeah, her. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, I love her too. If people want to learn more about Upside Down Magic, the book series, Where's the best place for them to look it up and buy them since we've got lots of time during the pandemic to read them all? If you Google um, Upside Down Magic and Scholastic, you will come to Scholastic's official umbrella site for UDM, which has videos of us and some games and stuff about all seven books in the series. And it could be that everybody knows this already, but Scholastic is the publishing house. So Scholastic is the one who gets the books out there into the world. And you can order the books online to wherever you like to order books from, ideally locally, because that's always so good. Yes, try to visit your local independent bookstore. In closing, what would you like to say to all the Upside Down Magic fans from the book readers and to all the new fans who have discovered UDM because of the Disney Channel movie? So, so far the response that I've gotten both to the books and to the movie is, you know, that the kids relate to it and respond to it and you know it, it they feel it in their heart and so I would want to say you guys listen we wrote this book about you I mean you, you know not exactly but we all feel out of place at some time in our life we all feel like we're not good enough we all feel like we don't you know fit all the right molds and I would say you know what you do so if one thing you take away from the movie and the books is you know own it own what's different if you need to but uh Make make the most of who you are and, and, and know that we love you. <laughs> Perfectly said. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for talking to me. I had such a good time. Thank you. Really good time. Yeah, it was a kick to, to talk to you. Yeah. And, and thank you. And what great questions. And thank you for taking the time to make this happen. It was really fun. <laughs> Linda yeah, crushed it. I mean, I could talk to you about the books as well as the movie. That makes me really happy um, because, you know, I love the movie. But we wrote the books, <laughs> so it's really it's really nice to um, to get to chat about those as well. Well, and if you love the movie, there's just so much. If you want to see more Nori? Guess what? You can. There are seven books out there, all about Nori. So that's a, a, a great resource to go to. Thanks, Sarah, Lauren, and Emily for joining me today. Be sure to watch Upside Down Magic playing on Disney Channel and Disney Now, and safely head to your local bookstore or order online the Upside Down Magic book series from Scholastic Press. 
I'm Linda Lee. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks, Linda Lee. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Well, the flyers fly and the flares flare and the fluxers flux <laughs> and the fuzzies fuzz. <laughs> the, fuzzies fuzz. the only one that's different is the flickers. Right.